panelist uh, is Dave Butler, and uh, Dave is uh, famous in, in Cranbrook, where we both come from, which is in the southeast corner of the province, for trying to teach the minister how to fly fish. <laughs> not, uh, not very successfully. He taught me how to cast uh, one of the local uh, soccer fields. I fished all my life, uh, Dave, and, and I'll stick to that story. Uh, but I was never really a fly fisherman, so Dave has, has tried to introduce me to the art of fly fishing. But more importantly, Dave is the Director of Sustainability for Canadian Mountain Holidays, one of the companies I referred to earlier. Uh, Canadian Mountain Holidays claims the title uh, as the world's first and most experienced helicopter skiing and hiking company. So looking forward to your comments, Dave. <laughs> Thanks very much for the opportunity to speak today from a tourism business perspective. Um, first, Mr. Minister, I'd like to say thanks for the announcement today. It was a really exciting piece of news. And I think on behalf of all the tourism operators in BC, we're very much looking forward to working with you and your staff to put this piece together. Uh, as many that know me know, I could talk for hours on the, the benefits of sustainable tourism and why it makes a lot of sense to, to go forward on this. But I hope everybody in this room already gets that and we don't have to do any persuasion today. There are two specific items I want to talk about today in terms of, of our role in this collaborative partnership and uh, the, the role we want to play and the reasons why we're so supportive of this. Uh, first, I guess uh, based on the other panelists, we're the doers of, uh, in, uh, when it comes to things on the ground. Simply put, in my mind, this is a leadership issue. Um, we really have to uh, get started on things. We can't wait for others to figure this out. And I think oftentimes uh, the, the, the discussions and debates, you know, I've been involved in a lot of debates about the definition of sustainable tourism. We've been debating about who should play what role and what the structure should look like and whether it should be a local or provincial or national or international level. And from our perspective, we really just want to get things started. Now, the, the debate is useful, don't get me wrong, but I just want to make sure from our perspective the debate doesn't become the delay and we get, we get going on things uh, on the ground. At the business level, I'm, I'm convinced that we are the place where change, innovation, and progress will occur, and we can make that happen in a number of ways. So we can encourage each other to get started, and we should do that as much as possible. We should share information about what has worked and what hasn't worked. We should try to influence as much as we can our supply chains. We should try to shape external environments, and that's why we're so excited about this uh, collaborative approach in BC educate our guests, and I think we have an amazing opportunity of, of affecting behavioral changes in our guests, and that translates what we do into a much broader range of things. Showing others what's the, what this looks like, that's again the sharing side. And then finally, we have to track our progress, and we have to continue to use that as a springboard for more action. In fact, this is why the BC Sustainable, Collect Sustainable Tourism Collective was formed, and that really remains our focus as a group of companies working together. The second piece is this uh, integration piece, and, and I think everybody in this room that has talked about sustainable tourism knows that when somebody says sustainable tourism, often the eyes glaze over and say, oh, that's a green thing, or that's, he's talking about an environmental thing, and, and they kind of discount it. <clears throat> but I really think we need to remind ourselves, and those watching us, that it's in these tough economic times that we have to keep most focused on this and keep focused on moving ahead. In my opinion, sustainable tourism must include all three components, the fiscal, the environmental, and the social. And we've got to try and integrate that into the very fabric of all of our companies, making sure that it becomes part of our decision making at every level uh, throughout the companies. Now, I think climate change is a great example of an issue that we face that is, lies at the intersection of those three pieces. And if you think about it, there are, there are clearly environmental issues associated with greenhouse gas emissions. There's no doubt about that. But when we consider the increasingly volatile cost of energy, and a realization that there's all those externalities out there that we really haven't incorporated into our businesses yet, this very much becomes a fiscal issue. And when we look at the opportunity of engaging our staff in solutions, many of whom are young people and are looking for the congruence of values uh, that they hold, that uh, along with some of the marketing and our messages, this very much becomes a social issue as well. So if we tackle this in the right way, we can build capacity, we can build buy-in, we can create empowerment, and we, have to, and we can make sure that our messages and our actions, in particularly in the marketing side, really match each other. One way to ensure integration, I think, is to start to think about different metrics for tourism which incorporate one, more than one component. And again, I'll, I'll talk about climate change, but looking at a company's footprint as just a matter of tons of CO2 equivalents is interesting and useful. But I think if we start to look at things like earnings per ton of CO2, 
all of a sudden that links two things together and we get a much better sense of the relative risk that we face and also some uh, uh, idea of some relative efficiencies. So I think those are more interesting ways we can integrate things together. But having said that, I want to say it's not all about climate change. Um, we talk a lot about that in British Columbia, certainly, and so we should. But there are a lot of other challenges that we face. This happens to be one that I think really lies very much nicely at the intersection of the three pieces. But there's other things we have to face that, that, that play those same roles. So in my opinion, we will have failed if sustainable tourism is something that kind of hangs out over there and is something separate. And I think we'll have failed miserably if it's something that we only do when times are good or if we drop it when we're in uh, the periods of crisis. Uh, if we do that, I think we're going to send a message to our staff, to our guests, uh, to anybody out there that's watching us, even our critics, that uh, fundamentally is irreparable. We, we can't afford to do that. An article I saw the other day said, don't lose your conscience during the crunch. And I really think that's a very timely and appropriate message for us in this conference. I would argue that we've actually allowed our financial institutions to act in ways that are unsustainable, and that's got us in a heap of trouble. So I'm saying, let's not let this happen to tourism. Instead, I suggest to you that now is the time we should build a culture uh, that is conducive to bring the three pieces together and integrate in, in those in the way we make our decisions, the way we operate our businesses. And I think in BC particularly, tourism businesses are ready to lead the way. So thanks very much and enjoy the conference.